In the great novel, The Hobbit, the character Thorin Oakenshield carries a sword called the Orchrist. The Orchrist. Maybe I'm saying it wrong, but that's how I say it. Orchrist, which translates as the Orc Cleaver, the Goblin Cleaver. This is what Thorin uses to cut up the orcs, to cut up the goblins. And in the Catholic Church, we have one of those two. It is the cleaver, the axe of St. Martin. Some people call it the hammer of St. Martin, and that's not exactly correct. It belongs to our tradition in the Catholic Church of when we come into contact with idolatry, we destroy it. We saw this just a few weeks ago with Alexander Chiguel from Austria and his buddy uh, d removing the Pacha idols from uh, the church of Santa Maria Transpatina throwing them into the Tiber River. We saw that with St. Vigilus, who also threw an idol into a river. We see that with St. Boniface, who cuts down the sacred oak. We see that with St. Benedict, who destroys the idol of Apollo. Of course, it goes back to the Old Testament with Moses and the golden calf, Baal, and I'm sorry, Elijah and the uh, prophets of Baal. And it also continues with today's saint. Today is November 11th. It is the feast day of St. Martin of Tours. Now, on the screen, you can see the axe of St. Martin. I call it the idol cleaver. It's kind of like the orc Christ, the idol Christ, the idol cleaver of St. Martin of Tours. And on the handle of this axe, this hatchet, in Latin, it's a securis, as you'll see in just a minute. There's an inscription, and I'll put the Latin up on the screen so you can look at it. Let's see if it comes up. There it is. All right. So you'll see the Latin. Idoa vanurunt martini chesa securi. Nemo deus credat qui sic fuerant ricuri. It's interesting here. You get lots of people who, who say this is how uh, Latin should be and shouldn't be. Uh, Latin was, was pretty fluid. This is obviously a more, uh, I think probably a more Northern European representation of it. And you can see they spelled idols, uh, with a Y here, but it's, you know, it would be normally with an I. So the idola, the first word you see there is idol. So the Latin is translated idols fall down by the ax of Martin. And here the, the word is sucuri, which means more of an axe than it does a hammer. And then the second part of the inscription reads, may no one believe that those are gods who were ruined seek thus. So we have a plu perfect there in the, in the fuleront. Uh, so idols fall down by the axe of Martin. May no one believe that those are gods who are ruined thus. Now, is this a legit Axe, did Martin use this? It's interesting. They've done some tests on it. The final form that you see there on the screen dates to the 13th or 14th century. So it was obviously decorated and updated if it actually goes back to St. Martin. I, I think it does. It's a cool tradition. Um, but it's actually, this is really interesting. This is an axe from the Bronze Age. It dates to 1000 to 700 BC. Now, just to put that into time for you, 1000 BC is about the time period of King David. 1000 BC, so 1000 years before Christ. So this is a very ancient axe, a very ancient hatchet. Somehow uh, it's associated with St. Martin. It's like a ceremonial axe for chopping down sacred trees. This is a big role for bishops and missionaries during this time period. Now for dates, St. Martin of Tours is uh, in the 370s. He was reluctantly appointed to be uh, a bishop in Tours. Uh, he tried to run away. They installed him anyway. And uh, he's associated in the way... He was kind of... To understand St. Martin of Tours, he was in the early medieval era. He was like their St. Francis of Assisi. The devotion to him was immense. They loved him. In fact, our word chapel, capella comes from St. Martin of Tours because of the story. I'll put it on the screen. 
There's the story of St. Martin. I'll move this over here. I'll move this here. There's this great story. This is the uh, Greco of Martin of Tours. He was a soldier. He was not yet baptized. A naked man without clothing in the cold appeared to him. And Martin cut his cape, his little cape, his capella, his capella in half and gave it to this man to clothe him and to give him warmth. And later it was revealed that this man was Christ himself. So St. Martin had clothed Christ. This was a great sign for him. He had a massive conversion uh, and he went on to be a, a Christian known for his penance. Because of his penance and his holiness of life, he was eventually chosen as a bishop. Now, the people saved that piece of his cape it was a little cape, a capella, and I believe it was the Frankish monarchs. I might have this wrong, but when they went out to war, they set up a tent for mass and they kept that capella, that cape of St. Martin, a precious relic with them in battle to seek the intercession of St. Martin. And that little tent where they had mass and kept the relic of the capella was called the Capella, where the capella was kept. And that's where we get the word for chapel. It's a reference to the little cape, the capella of St. Martin of Tours. So there's also a great uh, tradition. Uh, St. Martin of Tours, he was challenged by the pagans and a tree was to be chopped down. This relates again to these, these battle axes or these idol axes was to be chopped down and he stood in the way of it as a test and the tree fell the other way. It didn't kill him. And this was a sign that the, the Christian religion, the Catholic religion, was the true religion. In Europe, St. Martin's Day, November 11th, is, is more like here in America, we have Thanksgiving, which is a, a Protestant holiday. I mean, it, I've done a lot of videos on this. Uh, it's true that the Native American Squanto who helped the Puritans was actually a baptized Catholic. And there's another video on YouTube you can watch about that, how Squanto was the original hero of the Puritan Thanksgiving. But in Europe, this time of coming together for a feast, they usually ate a goose. A goose is associated with uh, the tradition of St. Martin of Tours. A goose was eaten. It was a time of Thanksgiving. It was also the time of peace. And we see this in the tradition of Armistice Day. Uh, this, let me pull up a little article here that I wrote a while back. Um, as you know, Veterans Day is an annual holiday in the United States, but in other countries, uh, the day is Armistice Day, and it recalls the ending of World War I at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 1918. And the 11th day of November is, of course, the Feast of St. Martin. And remember, St. Martin was a soldier. He was a military man who put away his, his mode of fighting. That was his career. He was a soldier, a professional soldier. He put that away and he became a hermit. He became a man of peace and of penance. And for this reason, that's why the day is chosen. It's a time of soldiers putting down their weapons, first cutting their capella, cutting their cape, giving it to Christ, putting down their weapons, and then serving Christ for peace. And this is why the Great War World War I was ended on the Feast of St. Martin. Now, there's another cool tradition that I found while I was looking for this called, okay, I'm going to take off the, the idol cleaver of St. Martin. This is so cool. This is amazing. It's very Maccabean. Maccabee means hammer. So it's amazing that there's this ceremonial object relic called the axe or the hammer of St. Martin. So I'm going to take that off the screen for a moment. And I'm going to play for you uh, a little clip. It's a cute clip of the Fenny Poppers. And I think all of us traditional Catholics need to restore this neat tradition. So I'm going to run it here. Hopefully it goes. The workers look forward to a well-earned rest. Here it is. Mystery of the Fenny Every Poppers. year, outside the Church of St. Martin's at Fenny Stratford, they celebrate St. Martin's Day with one of the most extraordinary traditions in Britain. It's the ceremony of the Fenny Poppers, 
miniature cannon which are normally kept inside the church. The vicar, ignoring the risk of flying sparks, watches as the verger and his assistant ram home the explosive. I'm going to pause here. I'm assuming this is Anglican because they're saying vicar, uh, which is done as Catholic too, but also a reference here. It's in England and a reference to the verger. We need In Anglicanism, I was an Anglican priest before I became a Catholic. We had a guy who was called the verger, and this relates to the Latin word for a stick. The verger went before the crucifer holding the cross, and this is an ancient medieval custom. It goes back to the minor order of Porter. The minor order of Porter protected the doors. He protected the clergy. He was sort of like a bouncer. And he also, they would lead the processions and open the way for people so that the clergy could move through and get to the altar or wherever the procession was. These are crowded places. So there was a guy called the verger. He went in front of everybody and he carried a, a mace, originally a stick. It was a decorative mace and he would go ahead. And if there's any problems, he would just whack people with the stick. And we're seeing now in the world uh, Antifa, and Mohammedans invading Catholic churches, upsetting masses, upsetting litur liturgies is happening in France as well, Chile recently. I think, of course, I've always been saying we need to restore the minor orders and make them functional. I really do think that we need the minor order of Porter and we need to reinstitute the office and the role of the verger. This is a guy who's dressed in cassock and surplus and he goes before the procession and he carries a big stick. It's called the verger. So in this video, you hear reference to the verger. Just wanted to take a long moment and explain that. And if you agree with me, leave a comment. We need vergers leading and protecting our clergy in mass, in church, and in processions. Resuming now. Let's tap some gunpowder. These poppers were made about 100 years ago, but the origin of the custom is wreathed in mystery. Early historians ignore it, early records make no mention of them, but a previous church on the site of St. Martin's is known to have been destroyed during the Civil Wars. Perhaps the Fenny Poppers are a warning not to start any... F they look like coffee mugs. It'd be cool to get some mugs made up like this, but they're cast. Any ...business again. This is fun. Perhaps it's the I only like way this. a vicar can fire a cannon. Okay. Fanny Poppers. I'm all about bringing back Fanny Poppers. We need some explosions, some fireworks. Let the vicar, let the priest light them up. So there it is, St. Martin's Feast Day. We need to get back to our our Catholic culture. We need to be excited and proud of our, I'm not, not proud in a sinful way, but we need to esteem our culture as Catholics. We need to esteem the idol cleaver of St. Martin. We need to esteem the story of, of St. Martin as a military man, as a patron of mili military men who puts down his weapons for Christ. And then he picks up a new weapon, the idol cleaver, and he goes to down goes to town destroying idols and chopping down sacred trees, just like Saint Boniface. This is the Catholic tradition. Don't let anyone tell you we're supposed to to support and honor and tolerate the idols. This is not what the original Catholic bishops would do. The Catholic missionaries they came in and they said Christ is King. Christ is the only true God. He's the son of the Most High. He has come with good news, and we have for you the sacrament of baptism by which all of your sins will be completely washed away. Listen to us. We are going to tell you. And they worked miracles. These were times of great faith in the Catholic Church. So by the time this video comes out, St. Martin's Day will have come to a close. But it's a great reminder to plan for next year. Maybe get a goose, cook it up. Maybe teach your kids about the idol cleaver. Teach them about St. Martin's. And somehow we need to get some of these fenny poppers and shoot some cannons around the churches. That looks like good old fun. 
Well, thanks for watching. Uh, a reminder, please pray the rosary every single day. That's our call as Catholics. And if you enjoy this channel and these, these little live streams and videos we put up, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button in the lower right. Please share this video on Facebook and Twitter. And we appreciate all of your support. And we'll see you in videos to come. Signing off. Godspeed. St. Martin of Tours. Pray for us.